Hey everybody, I'm Natalie of Namaste Farms and ReadyMethod.com. I'm going to take some time today to teach you a little bit about wool structure and the way that it uptakes acid dyes. For those of you who don't know, besides being a shepherdess at Namaste Farms, I also teach live online classes about dyeing. Um, this is something that I teach my students and I think that it's really helpful when understanding um, about dyeing and the way, really, that wool and the dyes behave. And one of the things that I used to ask my students was, do you really understand, like, think about where do you think the dyes go um, as far as when we're dyeing them on the wool? Is it on the top? Does it, like, penetrate? Where is it? And so I actually had to research this myself. I had to research it probably took 20 hours of reading scholarly articles, and a lot of them um, really are on raw wool. They're about yarns and other textiles, like fabrics. So, um... I'll start with what is a rendition of a strand of wool, and this would be the shorn end, and this is the tip, and their scales, and the way that the scales are oriented is from the shorn end to the tip end, and that's so that debris, when it hits, will actually run off. Right? If you've ever had, you know, fleece from someone who fed alfalfa, you would be thinking, well, it doesn't run off that well because it's horrible. However, this is, it's made, this is for rain or whatever to run off of the, from the shorn to the tip and onto the ground. Now, what early researchers thought is if we want dyes to uptake faster, why don't we ruin the cuticle? Why don't we ruin the scales? So the scales are also known as cuticle. And so they did. And the dyes didn't uptake any faster. And so they were left also with a very harsh feeling um, wool. And we all know that if we've over scoured, that's essentially ruining the cuticle, ruining the scales. And so it feels really harsh and it's horrible. So then they were like, well, what is it in the wool that is affecting the rate at which dyes uptake? And so they're like, there has to be a barrier. And so um, let's think of the scales the way the scales are is like this. It's like shingles on a roof. And the reason why dyes didn't um, uptake any, any more quickly was because there was really no barrier based on the scales. The dyes could get through because there's a gap. So then what they found, here's the cortex. Scales are on top of the cortex, right? And then here's cortical cells. And they found that around these cortical cells is something that's a continuous layer. It goes around all of them. It's protective. And it's called the cell membrane complex. Or the CMC. CMC. And within the cell membrane complex, there's lipids and there's a protein that is a non keratin protein. Most of you probably know that um, wool is 90% keratin, but inside here is a non keratin protein. And that was part of the problem, if you want to call it a problem to the speed at which dyes were, were striking. So um, using technology, they actually can disrupt um, this non keratin protein, and they can get dyes to be brighter and, um, and have them uptake faster, but it's not a technology that we were able to use. Um, and it's not, you know, in production, they're, they're not able to do it either. It's costly and, you know, like a lot of things like that. But beyond that, that's not even really the point. The point is that we have, let's say that I have taken this strand of wool here and I've cut it. And now we have um, two pieces and then we're looking inside. We're looking inside of, of a um, strand of wool. And so on the outside would be, you know, these scales. And then inside is the cortex. 
and more importantly, what makes up the cortex is the paracortex and the ortho. To a less degree, there's something in the middle that's called a meso, mesocortex. Now, remember that as I'm showing you this, this isn't one cell, this is one strand of fiber, and it's made up of these cells, right? So the para I'm always gonna show in just black. And of course in here are these cells like this. And once again, surrounding these cells is the cell membrane complex. Well, when the dyes strike, they're striking to the orthocortex. So it matters, it matters very much wool and how much orthocortex in proportion to the paracortex because the paracortex is very cysteine rich and and with the meso but less to agree it's not quite as stable as the para but these two things right here they are stable cysteine rich and don't take dye so we care about the orthocortex and this is where the dyes strike. Now, beyond this, what happens is there's something called adsorption, with a D, adsorption, and something called absorption. Of course, we know that word. And when I was talking about the dyes going and coming in through here, under the scales, through the scales, and going to the cortex. This is, by diffusion, is absorption. Dyes also can set, set, set right here on the top these, of these cuticle cells, and that's just setting, and that is adsorption, where they're just on the top. Okay, so the importance of the cortex is clear. When we talk not only about the way things take dye based on the ortho and the para, when things don't take dye, like medulated fibers, hollow pore, in here, the medulla would be in here. There, this would be, it would be devoid of the, the, this, these ortho and para, and it would just have a hollow pore. It'd be hollow. Okay, so, and obviously at that point it wouldn't take dye. And we know that those are very, the hollow fibers are, you know, they're, they're straight and hollow. They don't bend well. Uh, they don't take dye. Okay, so let's talk about this. There's something about the cortex that um, has to do also with the structure of a wool fiber. So here's three different, we're going to, this is going to represent three different strands of wool that have been cross-sectioned. Cross-section meaning like as if one, one strand's hanging down and I cut it and then I look down into it. Okay. The configuration that I showed you before, we'll, we'll call bilateral. And it would have about an even distribution of 50% para, paracortex to 50% ortho. And we know that this bilateral configuration has a very high crimp frequency, like in a fine wool merino. And beyond that, we also know that this configuration, that the orthocortex runs on the top, and that on the bottom is the paracortex. So there's another type that is called bilobal. And as you can imagine, it has lobes like this. And this configuration could be in something like a um, meat type of medium wool with this disorganized crimp. Some people try to call it a spiral crimp, but I, I really reject that. I, it's more of a disorganized crimp. And this could be in like a meat breed a medium wool meat breed, down breed. It's spongy. Spongy doesn't take wool, I mean, doesn't take uh, dyes particularly well. It doesn't felt particularly well. 
um, and um, it's it's just a different type of fleece. And this configuration um, in the medium wool category, also you, you'll find um, uh, sheep like the Coriadale, which is a crossbred, but this is not the type of fleece. They're, they have a they have a beautiful fleece and more of a it's a bilateral um, type of configuration, not not a super tight crimp like this, but you know, but it's very I call it like a Z type of crimp. Um, so once again, meat down type of breed. Okay, so here the next one is called Lobate Cellular. And here, there it's like patches. And once again, the black indicates the para. The white is the ortho. As you can see, there's quite a bit of white, um, the ratio, compared to the para. And this would be in like the long wool. It would be, ob this would be definitely a higher micron and have more of a wave crimp like this. So when we're talking about crimp, we're talking about the para and the ortho, but the orientation and the ratio of para to orthocortex. So the cortex is largely um, how we determine how fiber is going to uh, take dye. And not only that, it has to do, the orientation and the ratio has to do with the type of crimp that we have on the, the particular wool that we're, um, that we're looking at. And so even if I was just to see like a micrograph of the cortex, I could look at the orientation and the ratio and I could, I could tell you what type of wool that would be just based on the micrograph. So that's what I have for you today. If you have any questions, of course, you can email me at info at readingmethod.com. Um, you can check out my Facebook page at um, facebook.com slash teaswatersheep. Um, and I hope you learned something today. Anyway, thank you so much for watching.